Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan. Excuse the weird background, lighting, intro, everything. It's like eight o'clock at night right now. Not usually my time that I film, but I really wanted to start this video, so I'm just going with it. Um, this is the start of another book of the month reading vlog. If you are new to my channel, I do book of the month reading vlogs every so often as a way to keep myself accountable for reading my book of the month books as soon as I get them. I'm not sponsored or affiliated with book of the month at all, I wish. Um, I'm just a subscriber and enjoy the service and think that a lot of people might find it helpful to hear reviews on new book of the month books in case they want to pick them up or if they have them to decide whether or not to read them. I don't know, but I just really enjoy doing these vlogs and I am extra excited for some reason to get to these three books that I have now. So I'm going to go ahead and get to the books. So the first book is a thriller and actually all three of the books that I have this time are thrillers. It is a flicker in the dark by Stacey Willingham. Like I said, it's a thriller and I don't know much more than that. Just reading the synopsis on the book flap, it says it's about a girl who when she was 12 years old, six girls from her town went missing and her own father had confessed to those crimes and he was put away. But now 20 years later, the truth is coming out about what actually happened. I've actually been seeing really good reviews about this book so far, so I am very excited to get to it and I hope that I enjoy it. Obviously, I hope that I enjoy all of them. Um, the second book that I'm gonna be reading is one of the January 2022 picks. So this is uh, brand new. I actually just got the package off of my front porch and then started recording this. Um, it's Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This is a thriller set on like a tropical island, I think. Oh yeah, a desolate spot in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with a mysterious history of shipwrecks, cannibalism, and even rumors of murder. Interesting, it's about six visitors who go to that island um, and then obviously spooky things start happening. This book is a little bit shorter than I was expecting. It looks like it's right around 300 pages. So that's exciting. It makes me feel like it's gonna be fast paced hopefully. And then the third book that I got is not a new book of the month book or not a new book in general. It was one of the May 2017 book of the month releases. But this was one of my good friends on booktube, Gwen's favorite book of all of 2021. So I feel like that just made me have to pick it up. Um, it's Since We Fell by Dennis Lehan. And this is a mystery thriller. It looks like it's about um, a woman who had a very public mental breakdown and went from like a fancy journalist to a complete shut-in. She has a husband and apparently things are not as they seem. Gonna be honest, this doesn't sound like a book that I would normally love. It sounds like a very kind of standard domestic thriller, but I have trust in my girl Gwen. I also have trust in this author. Um, so it turns out this is a pretty famous or well-known author. He wrote the book Shutter Island, which I didn't even know was a book. I've seen the movie and I loved the movie. It had an amazing plot twist in my opinion. So I'm hoping that that means this book is gonna have some amazing plot twists. And if I enjoy this book, I think that I will definitely dive more into this author's backlist because I just can't believe that um, Shutter Island was a book and I didn't know it. That makes me kind of want to read that one, but also everything else that this author has written because he's written 12 other novels. So that's super exciting that I potentially have so many other books to read if I like this one. So let's call that it for this intro. I want to go ahead and get into these books as fast as I possibly can. So that's what I'm going to do. I will check in when I have updates on the books as I read them. And of course, let you know all of my thoughts once I finish them all. checking in on page uh, 192 of A Flicker in the Dark 
I just started this book last night. I started reading pretty early and was hoping I could like fly through this book all in one night. Didn't quite happen. I made it to only like page 100 last night in bed before I was tired and went to sleep. Um, but then this morning I woke up and was actually able to read a little bit more and then now I'm reading again. It is about 12.45 p.m. Both of my kids are taking a nap. Um, let's talk about the book. Uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. Like I mentioned, the premise is we're following this woman who when she was 12 years old, a bunch of like 15 year old girls from her town went missing and then it was found to have been her father who took them and killed them. And now it's 20 years later, her father is still in jail and it's starting to happen again. 15 year old girls are turning up missing and then turning up dead. So we're trying to figure out what's happening. Like, is it a copycat killer or was the actual killer not caught last time? We're trying to figure out what happened. It's very fast paced, which is nice. We're getting a lot of, you know, action happening quickly. Our main character is okay. She, um, I'm worried there's gonna be some like memory loss thing that comes into play later or something like that. And that is not a favorite trope of mine. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen, but um, we're getting a little bit of unreliableness from her. Also this book, it doesn't have a ton of characters, which is nice because it's not confusing at all. It's very easy to keep straight what happened and what's happening now, uh, but that does also make it so that there aren't that many suspects, if that makes sense. And of course, everyone is a little bit guilty or you have a little bit of suspicion of, which is a good thing in a mystery, but also to me uh, makes it a little unsatisfying at the end because it's like, well, yeah, it had to be one of you. So um, we'll see if something, of course, surprising could happen. I have my prediction about what I think is happening and who I think is really guilty, but we will see if I'm correct or not. Obviously, I'm not gonna give spoilers, but I'm happy to say that I'm enjoying it so far. And I think that the second half or so of this book is gonna go really quickly. So hopefully um, I can finish it today. That would be the plan. And I can share my final thoughts with you once I finish it. Exciting update time, you guys. Um, first thing is I finished A Flicker in the Dark and I'm really happy to say that I enjoyed it. There definitely were a few things in this book that typically annoy me in thrillers or can annoy me in thrillers. Like for example, we have a somewhat unreliable narrator and a situation where pretty much everyone seems guilty. I usually find those to be pretty lazy ways of writing mystery thrillers because if the narrator is unreliable, then you can throw a twist at the end, you know, that of course no one was expecting because the narrator was lying to us or um, was delusional the whole time and that's kind of annoying. And then when everyone is guilty, kind of same thing is it's easy to shock you at the end because of course you didn't predict the person who's guilty because everyone could have been guilty. Um, but I will say that this one, didn't annoy me even though it had uh, those elements 
and I think it's partly because I've come to uh, this place in reading mystery thrillers where I don't go into them anymore expecting them all to be shocking to me and all to be completely original. I more just go into them now wanting a fun ride. I just want to be entertained as I read the book. If I'm surprised, even better. And so I think I'm set up for a little more success that way. Let's see what else I put in this review. I just thought it was really compulsively readable. I wanted to know what happened in the end. I wanted to know who was really guilty. Um, I will say that I did predict some things of it and I didn't predict other things. So there were some surprising elements. And overall I gave it four stars. I found the story um, unique and not something that I've read a bunch of times before. So I would recommend this to fans of mystery thrillers, to anyone who has this from their December box and has been waffling between whether or not to pick it up. Um, I do think it's worth it. And I will be keeping an eye out for any books that this author puts out in the future. So that is a really great start. And then I also have an update because I started Reckless Girls. And let me tell you, I started this book last night in bed and I was only planning on reading like 50 pages before going to bed. And then 50 pages passed and then 100 pages passed and then 150 pages passed and I did not want to go to bed. So I read um, about 200 pages of this book. I'm on page... I'm on page 197 and I'm pretty hooked. I really want to know what's going to happen. Um, a couple disclaimers though about this book. First thing is if you have this book, I would not read what's on the front cover like this synopsis in front. I read it and I regret it because there are things that it says on that front cover that haven't happened yet and I'm two thirds of the way through the book. So I feel like when those things happen, um, I would have been way more shocked if I had gone into this book not knowing that they were going to happen, if that makes sense. And I'm still enjoying it, but again, I just think that would have helped even more. So I don't completely remember what I said was the synopsis of the story, but if I read this front flap, I probably edited it out a little bit, so I don't know if it made complete sense, but the synopsis that I would give is that we were following this girl who lives with her boyfriend in Hawaii and her boyfriend owns a boat and the two of them decide to um, take these two girls who are on vacation in Hawaii on a trip to this like deserted island. The two girls want to go and they need somebody to bring them there in a boat so they hire this couple so it's the four of them that go to this deserted island and that's really all you need to know. Um, it goes from there. I really really love the island vibes of this. It's so different from any thriller I've ever read. I've never read a thriller set on a tropical island and it also just gives me like vacation vibes. I wish I was on a vacation. I haven't been on a beach vacation in years since pre-COVID like all of us or like most of us. So I'm craving it and I'm living through this book. I'm living that experience vicariously through this book. Um, and then the other thing that I've heard about this book is that apparently it's some kind of loose retelling of an Agatha Christie novel. I'm not sure which one. Um, I don't know really anything about Agatha Christie. I've never read any of her books. I can't say whether this um, actually resembles that at all but I don't think you need to know that going in. You kind of know that this is gonna be like an isolated closed circle mystery. So I guess that's what it's pulling from because these people are on a deserted island. So there's not that many characters at play. So honestly, just throw that piece of information out of the window. Um, let's see, other than the island vibes, I'm also really enjoying or getting a lot of backstory to each of these four main characters. They've all gone through um, some trauma in their life. And so we're learning about what happened and how that's kind of affecting them in present day. And I'm really interested to see how it all comes together and makes sense and uh, plays out. So yeah, I'm really, really excited to read the last hundred-ish pages tonight. I will definitely be finishing tonight. I was considering staying up another like hour and a half to just finish it last night, but it's already way past my bedtime and I figured I should probably uh, get some rest so that I can be fully there and coherent and understand um, what happens at the end of this book, but I'm so excited to finish it. So I will be back with an update once I have it and once I finish this book. Good news, you guys. I finished the book and I loved it. I feel like I'm an unpopular opinion for some reason. Now that I finished it, I'm looking at reviews for this book and it's not that people aren't liking it. It's just not getting a lot of like five star ratings, but I'm giving it five stars. I really loved it. I was so into it and invested. I thought it was so fun. Um, some of the complaints or criticisms that I'm seeing for this book are that nothing happens until like the 70 or 80% mark, which is kind of true. I mean, things happen before that, like things are happening the whole time, but uh, like the real action of the story and like the true thrilling parts don't happen until 
kind of the very end. So that's another reason, again, why I wouldn't recommend reading the front flap of this book, this description, because I think it gives away too much about what's gonna happen or where it's gonna go. Also, the thing about it being a retelling I think is just throwing people off and I think if you're going in expecting one thing you're gonna get something else so go in with no expectations and then you'll just have a fun ride <laughs> so that's that I'm giving it five stars and I'm really pumped about it and I hope that I start to see more five-star reviews and more people rave about this book I just thought it was so much fun um, but now I'm gonna go ahead and get started on since we fell which I'm also really excited about from what I hear this one also kind of just takes off from page one and doesn't stop with the action until it's over. So hopefully I fall in love with this one too and just uh, kind of devour it the same way I did the last book. But either way, I will check in with some thoughts and feelings when I have them and let you know how I'm feeling about this third book. But we are off to a really good start with the first two. I am um, 71 pages into Since We Fell and I'm interested but I'm not hooked yet. I'm very curious to see where the heck this book goes. Um, basically we're following this woman who never knew her dad and so she was raised by her mom, only knew her mom and her mom gave her like very little to no information about her dad um, and then now this woman's mom has died so she's kind of all alone and she really wants to find out who her dad was and meet him and so that's what she's doing she's trying to find him and so far it's not the most like high-paced story it's kind of slow but we just reached a point where i think things are gonna change like i think she's gonna go in a different direction now do something else and so i'm curious to see where it goes Gwen, who recommended this book to me, this was her favorite book of all of last year. So I'm expecting it to go somewhere. I'm expecting it to become something that I can't put down. Um, and she said that like at some point when reading this book, she found herself being like, wait, how did we get here? This was not uh, what I thought the story was gonna do. So I am expecting that to happen. I'm expecting for there to be some kind of, I don't know if it's an actual twist or just like a general twist in the story where we start going down a different road. I'm just curious to find out what that is and where we go from here. So I'm gonna keep uh, reading. I actually was able to also get this book on Hoopla, so I'm listening to the audiobook as well as reading it physically, so that'll help me hopefully get through it quickly. So I'm gonna continue listening and reading. And if I have another midway update, I will let you know. Otherwise, when I finish, I'll let you know. Um, I'll just be back when I have an update. Okay, I am still trucking along in Since We Fell. Um, I'm actually flipping through the pages right now to figure out what page I'm on. I just got to part three. I don't know how many parts there are in the book, but um, they're separated into parts. I'm on page 265 approximately. Um, so I'm over halfway through the book. I'm probably like two thirds, almost three quarters of the way through the book. You guys, this is a weird one. Um, the book definitely took a turn and I'm at a part now where again, I'm like, okay, where the heck is it gonna go from here? Because something that just happened at the end of this, the last part was very action packed um, and took another twist. And I'm very curious to see where it goes from here. And I really can't say what's happening because that's obviously the point of the book is to figure out what's happening. And it would be a big spoiler to tell you what's happening and what the twists are. I can't say I'm loving it. I don't know, it's something about the pace of this book feels really slow. What did I say, I'm on page 265 
and it's felt like a long 265 pages so far and it's like a weird balance between sometimes it's very action-packed but most of the story so far has been very slow and we're in the head of this very unstable unconfident woman which i don't think is a bad thing i like her and her perspective it's just not super attention keeping i guess to read from that perspective because we're getting a lot of the same repetitive thoughts over and over in her mind where she is nervous to do things and she's doubting herself and she's just not a very confident person but she wants answers about what's going on so we will see my mind is open i will definitely be finishing this within the next day or two it is friday afternoon right now it's actually snowing and we're expecting quite a bit of snow through tonight and into tomorrow morning so i'm sure we won't be doing much this weekend going many places or anything so i'll just be hanging with my family and reading so i will probably update you at this point once i finished because i am pretty close to the end i'm not sure I'm not sure how many parts are left or what else is gonna happen, but we'll find out and I'll let you know when I get there. stacked on a bunch of books right now so hopefully that doesn't fall um i just wanted to update you one last time because today is saturday morning and last night i finished since we fell what to even say about this book it is unpredictable that's for sure this is a book where i had no idea what was coming on the next page let alone like the next several pages by the end of the book it took many turns and that was fun i really like being surprised in books I apologize also if things are loud around me. There's a whole bunch of snow, so like everybody on all sides of my house is snow blowing their driveways, and it sounds loud to me, so I'm sure it sounds loud maybe to you. Um, but this book is very hard to describe without giving any spoilers. Um, Gwen, who recommended this, is right in that that first synopsis of this girl trying to find her dad is not really accurate to the rest of the book, but it's kind of a spoiler to say the rest but it's also hard then to know if this is a book to recommend to you because to be completely honest if I knew the full synopsis of this book I might not have expected to love it or I might have known that this wouldn't quite be the book for me so I guess that's kind of a risk you have to be willing to take you know if you're going to go into books blind is you're going to end up with some books that you don't like that you would have known you wouldn't like so I'm going to take a couple seconds here to give like mild mild spoilers and talk about what the rest of this book is about I'm not going to say what happens so if you do want to read it you definitely still can and there are twists and turns all along the way but if you have somewhat particular tastes in like mystery thrillers maybe this would help you decide whether or not this one is for you so i'll put mild spoilers here on the bottom and if you don't want to be even mildly spoiled go ahead and fast forward to when that goes away but if you're curious or if you've already read it you can um stay and listen so this book after this woman is going on a hunt for her father that trail eventually ends but a person who had helped her along that journey and had helped her investigate that becomes her boyfriend husband and then the rest of this book happens after our main character finds something out about her husband that makes her think she doesn't know that guy at all even though he had spent years kind of building trust with her she thinks she knows who he is but then something happens um that makes it evident that she has no idea so the rest of the book is really her figuring out what is her husband involved in does she truly know and can she truly trust her husband um and what is she kind of in the middle of now so with that in mind i just feel like i don't love domestic type thrillers where it's like a husband and wife don't really know each other are keeping secrets from each other so that may have prevented me from picking this up or not even from picking it up because I still think I would have after hearing Gwen's rave review of it but I might not have gone in with quite such high expectations if I would have known that it's kind of a domestic thriller at its heart. So with all of that being said, I'm gonna rate this book three stars. I don't think it's bad, um, just wasn't a personal favorite for me. I'm so glad that Gwen loved it so much and it's her favorite book of last year. I am still very much interested in checking out other books by Dennis um, Lehane, which I listened to the audiobook, like I mentioned, and the audiobook narrator said Lehane. Mystic River looks like his book that has gotten really good reviews. Um, and I'm gonna look into the synopses of his other books because I feel like he is a really good writer. He makes really interesting stories. I just need to find one with a plot that really hooks me and that I fall in love with. 
So with that, we're done with this video, and I would say pretty successful that I ended up with a three star, a four star, and a five star. I didn't vehemently dislike any of them, and I actually found a surprising um, five star read, so that is always a pleasant surprise. So please let me know if you have read any of these books, or if you picked them up in book of the month, and when you plan to read them. And other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Mm -hmm.